Uh, hello, everyone. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, let us begin. We uh, are starting our session on education and expert knowledge. We are glad to see everybody who was able to join us. And um, hopefully we will have a meaningful talk, meaningful discussion. And at the end of the discussion, um, we are planning uh, to have a lottery. A, lo a lottery so it will be the selection of the best um, speaker of today's session, which will be voted for, who will be voted for by everybody present. Uh, best speaker or best two speakers, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I hope that will provide you with extra motivation and extra effort that you will willfully put into your presentation. Okay, uh, so we have, um, let me run through the agenda quickly so we're all on the same wavelength and we know what um, in, in the order in which the presentation will be moving. Uh, first of all, uh, the session, uh, as you see, is called Education and Expert Knowledge. Today is the concluding day, the second day of the conference, and throughout the conference, a broad array of topics, disparate uh, and diverse, has been discussed, ranging from China to globalization, from digitalization to urbanization or de-urbanization and no other Asians, okay? The area that we're gonna be talking today is of pivotal importance. It's a key area we have personally experienced dramatic and turbulent changes in because we have been right in the middle of it. And we have experienced all these changes during the pandemic and post pandemic. We were not on the sideline being passive observers. We were on the front line handling all these challenges. Let me explain the flow of the panel discussion today and introduce the speakers. Uh, we are happy to see um, Vice Rector of our Academy, uh, Sergei Misayedov, who will say a welcoming, um, a, a welcoming few words. Uh, then we will proceed to the discussion of um, science and how it determines what people think. There will be two speakers. Uh, and afterwards, uh, well, the one will focus on the um, science and its role. And the uh, Valeria will also talk about the role of experts. Okay, so then it's only fitting and logical to introduce our experts. We have two experts uh, in the session, uh, Dr. Hazret Balsioglu and Antonio Freitas. Uh, Dr. Hazret Balsioglu will present, um, uh, will make a presentation, will present information on um, <clears throat> adaptability of learning, adaptive learning rather, okay. Uh, she is a board member of Higher Education Planning, Evaluating, Accrediting, and Coordinating Council. She is a member of Equivalence Committee of North Cyprus. Antonio Freitas um, will talk about innovation in education. He is the head of National Association of Business Administration undergraduate courses in Brazil, which is a member of the Alliance of Management Development Associations in Rising Economies. After the presentation of the experts, we uh, will have a question and answer session, uh, which will be uh, moderated and um, facilitated by my fellow uh, moderator, Mr. Fatih Ali Khan Pani. Uh, we have been I really would like to thank everybody for like all this work, preliminary work that has been put into this um, um, session it has been tremendous and it has been wonderful uh, to have all of you and to work with you in such a productive and collaborative fashion. Uh, we, 
after the questions and answer session, we will proceed to the second part of our topic, um, of our talk, which will focus on best practices. So one of the key challenges that we're facing is that sometimes education is believed to be divorced from reality. And uh, academics is used in a pejorative sense, meaning that we don't really connect with the business world. And um, as a result, people and students and graduates are not as employable and their employability is rather low. And there is this yawning gap uh, between what the, the universities turn out and between the requirements and need of the real business world. So it's really imperative to bridge this gap. We will have a presentation of Ilya Gaidukov, Polina Shatalina, uh, and um, Natalia Rajnova, if I believe I got the name correctly. Uh, they will be talking about transformation of business schools and universities curricula. So they will be talking about best practices, how best U.S. universities, uh, members of Ivy League schools, how they bridge the gap between academics and the business, which is really uh, pivotal. And the last but not least, least, we will talk about English. Because without proper knowledge, without excellent command and high proficiency in the language, all these best practices, all these ideas will never be translated into practice. They will remain the figment of our imagination. So we will have the presentation of three speakers um, to wrap up the session, talking about hard skills, language skills, uh, which are um, indispensable when we are talking about really raising the level of education to um, a new standard. At the end of the session, uh, I believe we will all um, say some of our conclusions, our take out, what is it that we have learned, okay, and maybe the way forward. Um, I am planning on two moderators on um, Fatih and me sharing our conclusions, which you're all very welcome to join. Well, um, do we have um, uh, Sergei Misayedov among our participants yet? I'm afraid not yet. Okay. Um, all right, so let's, um, then we can start with um, science and the role of science. Uh, Mr. Puzanov, would you please begin? Vladimir. Yes, good evening, dear participants. I'm glad to be the first one to present my topic. Okay. Can you see my presentation now? Um, yes, if you could just kind of uh, stretch it a bit because it just takes, yeah, this is much better. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Well, uh, good evening once again, dear participants. I'm Vladimir Puzanov, and I'm glad to be the first one to present my topic. And I'm the third year student of International Business School student. The topic of my today's presentation is science and how it determines what people think and do. And in my brief speech, I will say now how uh, achievements of science impact on humanity. So... Science is the most powerful engine of social program, uh, progress nowadays, and it allows us to prolong our lives, monitor and strengthen our health, meet basic needs. Science also makes our life more simpler. Uh, it uh, makes it easy by providing us with numerous opportunities. And that's why it can change our life anytime uh, fundamentally. Just like Aristotle once changed people's worldview in 4th century before Christ, providing the spherical shape of the earth, modern discoveries uh, radically change our life. And as well, for example, the age of great geographical discoveries uh, enabled Europeans to discover almost all continents, islands, thus significantly change, uh, changing people's lives and their uh, thinking about life as well. Well, uh, today a lot of vital discoveries are made from time to time and different to humanity spheres. So these spheres are so because they determine people's nearest future or stay acute always. 
and how do the, they influence on people's activity? Here I put uh, relevant topics. First one is, is vaccine against COVID-19 and then artificial intelligence. So vaccine against coronavirus. That's the only chance to save the world today. At uh, first, people didn't have an idea how to perceive new illnesses, uh, this illness. And uh, uh, now due to numerous scientific uh, research, research uh, carried out within last year, some countries managed to provide a vaccine against this uh, terrifying disease. So here, vaccine plays a major role in changing situation to better one. More people are getting immune, thus it keeps disease to spread. And the more people use this achievement of science, uh, the faster we'll, uh, we will be able to come to any place, anytime, and contact uh, as much people as uh, we want. Already now, it brings hope to people to return to formal life we used to. And another relevant phenomenon is artificial intelligence. Considering artificial intelligence in more global sense as positive factor, Artificial intelligence simplifies people's lives and secures it as well. And uh, let me uh, provide you some examples. First is digital board by General Electric. This invention indicates uh, critical moments of business. The system shows how processes in the company perform against goals and alert managers to take action if needed. This way people are directed by this mechanism and it makes them think and uh, their ones uh, to create a fully automatic enterprise even, which instantly reacts to changes. And then uh, second example is uh, provided by a, a scientist of universities of Tomsk and Tokyo. This is a recent invention. It is a software that uh, allows to predict natural disasters such as landslides, floods, earthquakes, and so on in Japan and Siberia, which occurs uh, in these regions uh, very often. The results can be used to carry out uh, preventive work in the event of emergency. And the, the software presents real terrain, buildings, constructions, records data about people who have fallen into dangerous zones. There have already been several cases of prevention, some emergency cases. And uh, this example of artificial intelligence makes people think ahead. The results uh, that artificial uh, intelligence brings to people, it saves our time, uh, for uh, other activities, processes, because machine can do, machines can do job instead of people. But uh, that also uh, gives, uh, that also uh, leads to people uh, losing their value uh, and uh, they are to find another relevant in the future position and other spheres to educate for and work for. However, new science technological sector as well provides new job uh, stations and the niche for development uh, and growth creation workstations. Uh, then I'd like to um, provide you uh, some connection to Ronepa recent study, uh, which was carried out by Stepan Zemtsov from Laboratory of Inter uh, Entrepreneurship Research. So uh, the Ronepa studied uh, which industries will be most uh, susceptible to automation and concluded that by 2030, uh, 20 point, uh, one million Russians uh, will be at risk of being uh, out of work. However, this is a long process and people will have time to retrain. The, uh, there as well in the slide, you can see um, spheres which uh, are mostly susceptible, uh, susceptible in this situation. Well, talking in narrow sphere, how uh, artificial intel intelligence determines our everyday life it gives them us prompts, what, for example, what film to watch in the evening or book to read according uh, to our subscriptions, what to buy on the marketplace relating to our previous purchases, where to go, what to buy. Uh, well, and uh, so, uh, so I come to conclusion that modern science forms the worldview of a person. It's uh, closely connected with the technological progress. It helps to create forecasts for the future of the development of the society and develop programs, solve problems of humanity uh, is facing. So uh, that is the conclusion I have come to. Thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, thank you. Could we now move on to the next speaker who also has deeper insights into how science influences our behavior and our actions accordingly? And uh, we'll also talk about the role of experts. Valeria. Yes. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. So my name is Valeria Sminova, and I'm waiting for the present. Yeah, so this is my presentation. So I will tell you when to switch onto the next slide and thank you very much in advance. So my topic is, as you, can, as you could have seen, is the role of experts. To begin with, I would like to describe who an expert is. And an expert is someone who possesses distinguishable characteristics which separate him from the masses. The main purpose of the presentation is to define the role of that individual. So to begin with, if we simplify the system of the world, we can say that everything in it can be called an organization. And every organization has a certain structure. And inside that structure, there are roles of managers. They direct and control the processes in any corporation or an institution. And, how, and um, however, with time and with the development of any organization, the number of managers multiplies and the process of decision-making becomes more complex and less cohesive. And this breeds problems with bureaucracy. This is an issue which can be solved with, within an organization if the key managers employ a specialist, a person who can play a role of a consultant, a scientist. With the help of an expert, a person who, who um, there is no need for numerous managers who all have different yet similar roles. This is where a company can hire a professional consultant. To illustrate the functions of such a person, we can outline them. And firstly, they provide information to a company that hires them through collecting it in the form of surveys or different observations of competitors and so on. They solve particular problems. For example, when a company is in need of the second opinion or an expert insight. So next slide, please. The management consulting industry is a highly successful one. According to the statistics, in, during the last nine years, the consulting industry has noticeably grown and reached its peak in 2019, after which it declined by 18% in 2020. It was due to the fact that many companies have suffered economic challenges during the pandemic and decreased many of their projects. So next slide, please. Among the top 15 consulting companies, I'm sure you know all of them, the top ones are Deloitte, Ernst & Young, KPMG, McKinsey & Company, and other ones. So the next one, please. The key contribution of scientists in implementing decisions of policymaking directly to government officials accounts among the most influential forms of information transfer from the scientific community to the general public authorities and political institutions. So policymakers and businessmen rely on scientific knowledge and political institutions. So they rely on that to make well-informed and legitimate decisions in unique and complex policy areas such as education, international affairs, eco economy, and so on. Usually they implement their potential in three main stages those consultants. They enlighten policymakers or businessmen of the information they own. Then they describe what can be done to solve an issue by outlining different methods. And finally, they make explicit propositions. So the next slide, please. Experts in politics are quite popular nowadays because they can give the public an insight into what is going on in the world. They stand out as they have a level of credibility and competence, and that is how they shape what people think. However, one of the unavoidable issues is the fact that experts use a certain way of expressing their thoughts and ideas with the scientific or technical terms, which can be difficult to understand for ordinary people. And all in all, the whole purpose of experts in the political sphere is to explain events which at first glance seem unrelated and random. Apart from that, a lot of political bodies, such as the European Union, the Inter International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea and others, 
appoint professional experts as well. For example, the panel uses expert influence upon the WTO dispute settlements. Next slide, please. Um, among the negative aspects of using someone else's expertise is namely the limitation of a scientist's knowledge. There can be cases when a self-declared expert is trying to share his ideas in the field which is less known to him and thus one can feel misinformed and misguided. Experts can be biased and inclined towards the resolution which is closer to their field of the professional interest. Moreover, Sometimes experts can provide the client with the standardized solution, which is long before entrenched in their practice. In conclusion, even though when one hires an expert, it is possible to fall into the trap of false expectation when an expert is not qualified enough. It is important to choose wisely a consulting company or an individual consultant in any area. It is undeniable and undoubtable that experts play a crucial role when working with companies and providing them with skillful solutions. So thank you for your attention. That is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you, Valeria. It was uh, very interesting, done with a perfect British accent. Um, thank you. Uh, we are joined by uh, Sergei Pavlovich Misayedov, um, Vice Rector of our Academy, and the words of Valeria about credibility, competence, and expertise are fully applicable to him. So let me give the floor to Sergei Misayedov, um, and um, we are looking forward to hearing your insightful speech. Thank you very, very much. Can you hear me all right? Yes. That is very, very good. First of all, thank you very much. It's a great honor for me uh, to, 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 to make a short presentation at such a conference. And on the screen, I can see a lot of familiar faces of my friends from all over the world. And first of all, if you permit, I want to greet Antonia Freitas, one of the leading people of business education in Latin America and a great friend of mine. I'm honored to greet all the professors and faculties, and I can see the interest to the conference. Thank you very, very much for your support. And third thing, it's, it's a great, great satisfaction for me that so many students with fantastic English are eager to participate in international discussions and to outline their opinion. Uh, so, with your permission, I want just to make several stresses. What, what in particular I mean and what I think about the education and expertise in today's world. Unfortunately, I won't be as structured as Valeria Smirnova, whose very bright student's presentation I just followed. Valeria, my congratulations. It was, it was very nice. And now about expertise and education. It seems to me that now for both faculties and students in our present VUCA environment world, for those of you, uh, I mean the students who never met the term VUCA, that would be volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity altogether. In this world of change, when we cannot really forecast the future, education should bring absolutely new knowledge and skill for the students. We used to say that the best universities of the world help students to develop critical way of thinking. It is principally important. However, today I consider it is not enough. Plus, to critical way of thinking, we have to develop entrepreneurial way of thinking, especially for those students who study at business schools or business universities. Because in today's world, we shouldn't only think well. We have to learn how to bring new things, how to provide our impact. Many years ago, when I was lucky to study 
at Harvard Business School. It was before big business schools upmerged in Russia. Uh, I learned from Harvard professors one very important maxima. All the people in our planet can be subdivided into two groups. All the people are either problem solvers or problem makers. And we have a lot of well-educated people who are problem makers and who are waiting for the state, for other people, for the conditions and circumstances when something would be changed in their lives. And there are those people who are problem solvers who start doing that themselves. Uh, maybe some of our students know that one of the international consultants of our business school and the great friend of our business school is Dr. Uh, Isaac Calderon Adizas. And I remember a very, very good story about this way of thinking. He is very fond of repeating. After the huge storm, two people walk along the ocean and a lot of uh, sea stars are dying on the sand from the sun. The people are talking. One of them is looking to the sky and speak about some very important high top things. And another while following his words, take one star and throws it to the ocean, then another one, then the third one. After a certain period of time, the first gentleman says, look, what for are you doing that? We have dozens of that here, hundred dozens of that here. It's impossible to do something in the way you do. The government has to think about that. Or maybe the Lord himself should think about their lives. And another person answers, while you are waiting for the government to do something, while you are looking to the sky, I have already saved four dozen lives. And that's what I mean by problem solvers. We have to learn from the very beginning, not only to describe the problems. We have a lot of analytical papers, but we have to think how we at our place can help the world to settle those problems. And so I'm really happy that today and yesterday, the students from all over the world were discussing and continue to discuss those problems which exist in the world, the problems of sustainability, green economy, uh, pollution, uh, difference, uh, differentiation of wealth, uh, principles of responsible management, education, social responsibility, etc. They discuss and they think how to intervene and how to start doing something to save our planet and to make it to live better. That was the first notion. And one more, also pretty simple and pretty short. Today, it is very difficult to be an expert. I mean, exp expert who is really of necessity for the present world and for the present life. Today, our expertise, should be pretty broad. It should be multifunctional. It should be multi-subject. Every time we're coming to the world, we can see that breakthroughs are made by science and economy and industry and business when several fields of science are combined together. Astrophysics biochemistry, et cetera, et cetera. The major breakthrough things are in between the fields of science, the functions of our activities, the functions of expertise. 
Several years ago, when I came to a very famous Russian company, the name is Rosatom. Uh, that's one of the biggest world company that is making uh, construction of the uh, atomic power stations. The people told me, Sergey, uh, if you'd like your business school to work with us, please think how you can help us to develop product owners. Product owners, uh, three or four years ago, I was ignorant. I got the term for the first time and I was confused. I didn't know what was product owner. After some time, I found out the meaning and the most important thing, I found out the significance of this term. They're in the company. They have fantastic engineers. They have fantastic theoretics of science. Those people are very deep experts in one field of knowledge. But if you want to create some new product that would be of demand for the customers of the world, you have to develop an expert, specialist, businessman, entrepreneur with 360 degrees vision in between different functions and sciences. And the problem is that very often great engineers say, we know how to solve our engineering problems. Why should we care about marketing, customer satisfaction? Why should we calculate the costs? Why should we think about the pollution? There are other experts. It doesn't work in the present world. We have to develop the people who are at least aware about other disciplines and professions, who can listen to the other people and hear what they say. Then they become thinking, they start thinking as product owners. They think about their product from around, from all the aspects. Also three or four years ago, Mr. German Greff, the boss of Sberbank, while asking our business school to develop the program, it exists now, it's the program FinTech, Financial Technology. He told us that enrollment preselection for the program should be made with the stress on the people whose right and left part of the brain are equally developed. We need the people who can use the tools of soft power, soft skills, and hard power. Today, the people cannot have only in-depth expertise in one field. We need, and again, the same word, product owners. And that's a very big challenge for today's programs, at least at business schools. Maybe the students of IBS Moscow know that step by step, we bring to all of our bachelor program, not only mathematics, though predominantly we make a stress on humanitarian education. We brought this year to one of our departments of bachelor programs, Python programming. And the people, the students at the first year of education start learning it. We do not train them to be programmists. We want just to create awareness about the ability of programmists with modern methods and modern uh, breakthrough technologies. We have to understand each other because the future of the world will be a happy future if we are able to understand each other, if our expertise is in depth in one field, but we're still aware about the other achievements of the world, if engineers, theoreticians in math, mathematics, and humanitarian people, managers, entrepreneurs, leaders can sit together, speak, in plus minus the same language, understand each other and to create the future of the world 
together. And that's a very, very big challenge. And it seems to me that our conference and the importance of our conference is that all together we provide certain impact, real impact in pushing the education towards this new paradigm when the people are intercultural, interfunctional, when the people look at all the problems with the perspective of 360 degrees. I can see that here I shall make a full stop. Thank you very much for your participation in this conference. Thank you for your attention. I do hope that friendship, which was developed while which I was developed by you while preparing this conference all together, would continue working for the benefit of business schools and universities, professors, and with a special stress for the students of all of our countries and continents. Thank you very much. God bless you. I wish you success both in the conference and in your future life. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Sergei Pavlovich, for uh, such an enthusiastic speech. And yes, we do have international experts uh, from different parts of the earth who are happy to contribute their insight. Uh, we uh, let's hear from um, Hazret uh, Balsioglu, and um, uh, she will talk about adaptive learning and. Um, uh, you are welcome uh, to join to start your presentation, Hazrat. Good evening to everybody. I am very honored to be among such a kind of intelligent and motivated students. Congratulations to each student. Their presentations were wonderful. Uh, the organizers has told me that I can make a brief introduction of my institution and uh, higher education in North Cyprus. Before I present the adaptive learning, which is accepted as the future of education, I will present uh, briefly, briefly uh, about Yodak, which is currently I am working in, and a bit about the higher education in North Cyprus as well. Okay, my name is Astet Baljolu. I am a professor of economics. My supervisor, my PhD supervisor was from Harvard University. I had a subspeciality area like microbiology and uh, immunology. I had uh, certificates in the summer schools from John Hopkins University and the Harvard as well. Now, currently I'm working as an executive board member of the Higher Education Council in North Cyprus. And um, our responsibility is to plan, uh, coordinate, accreditate, and evaluate of the higher education institutions in North Cyprus. The next slide, please. Uh, here is the outline of my presentation. First, I will speak about YODAC, higher education in North Cyprus and adaptive learning. Then I will try to accept I will try to have the questions if you have and try to answer them. Okay, if I want to mention about YODAK, YODAK has been established in 1937 under the Ministry of Education. And uh, it has been independent in 2008. Uh, it is made up one president and six members. So we have seven board members. All of us are appointed by the president of North Cyprus. Six board members are elected, three from the parliament and three from the university's higher education committee. And I am elected by the parliament. All of us are full-time professors and appointed for four years. And next slide, please. Okay, the next one. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't say the person to. This is our building. It's a trend building. Um, inside, it is neatly designed. It is very nice. Please, the next one. 
the other one, please. Sorry, I didn't. Okay. Now, as a Yodak, we are internationally recognized. We are a full member of INQA, ENCA, and the affiliate member of ENCA, and the founding member of the UK NARIC and the ACRU. Please, next slide. Whenever we mention about the higher education in North Cyprus, in fact, the first higher education institution has been established in 1937. It was the Atatürk Teacher Training Academy. And as a university, it was founded in 1979. It was the Eastern Mediterranean University. We have 21 universities as of September of 2020. And the majority of the programs are made in English language. The next one, please. And I would like to mention a bit about the number of the students. We have 113,000 of students. Uh, they are coming from 138 universities, uh, sorry, countries. So we have a lot of international students, like 34%. And total number of faculty members, it is almost 4,600. So we have 701 professors. And uh, we have the bachelor, master, and PhD degrees. So we have a lot of uh, different programs. And uh, in North Cyprus, we really uh, motivated by the international accreditation institutions. So we have a lot of international accreditation institutions. For example, for the business programs, we have FIBA, ACAS, and the AACSCB, uh, like your university. Please, the next one. Okay, for the adaptive learning, which we mean the uh, intelligent tutoring, I want to show you a video. It's a short one. It is almost 1.50 minutes. Please watch the video and then I will try to make a bit more explanations. Thank you. World Learning Clicks presents What's Up With Adaptive Learning. According to EdSurge, adaptive learning is an education technology that can respond to a student's interactions in real time by automatically providing the student with individual support. Adaptive learning can be broken down into two categories, adaptive assessment and adaptive instruction. Adaptive assessments are computer-based assessments that alter the questions a student receives based on his or her response to the previous question. The difficulty of questions will increase as a student answers them accurately, while the questions become easier if the student struggles to answer correctly. Adaptive instruction looks at a student's specific answer and responds with unique hints and feedback based on that answer. Adaptive instruction provides explanatory, answer-specific feedback based on each student's unique response. As you can see, adaptive learning does so much more than simply mark answers as correct or incorrect. It responds to students in real time with individualized instruction and tailored feedback that empowers higher order thinking skills, drives deeper understanding, and accelerates learning. Okay, the next slide, please. Adaptive learning. So its origins are coming from 1970s. People were really knowing the importance of the adaptive learning. But because the size of the computers were large and the costs of them were high, they couldn't concentrate on such kind of learning systems. So. In 1980s, in 1990s, they have made a big uh, investment on this kind of computer intelligence uh, materials. But whenever we come to 2020, uh, we have understood it much better. And because the size of the computers have been decreased and the cost levels are um, balanced according to the less developed countries as well. So we have tried to use the computer, artificial intelligent algorithms, 
so that we can maintain the necessary learning environment so that the students can find the necessary materials, the tools, in order to adopt their learning system uh, to get the necessary knowledge, skills, and the critical thinking way in order to find the solutions to the creative problems and to the solutions of their learning skills. So there are a lot of literature about adaptive learning, but uh, here I have tried to show the Carbonell and the Tomlinson. They have made a lot of contribution to this intelligent tutoring system. So the next slide, please. Here I have tried to make a comparison to show the audience so that we can make some a comparison, some interpretation, so we can understand it much better. On the left hand side, you can see the traditional learning, and on the uh, right hand side, the adaptive learning. On the traditional learning, we can know that the educators find the content and then they organize the content, and then we edit the content and we give it to the students. So we come to the class. We make the necessary presentations. Maybe we can write on the blackboard. Sometimes we are not aware, but we turn our back and we try to make some calculations, for example, in the math courses. What I have noticed after 20 years of uh, being an instructor in the international universities, uh, whenever, especially in the business courses, Whenever you teach the math, it is becoming difficult for the students to understand it because you need to show uh, some practical ways or to show some practical questions so that they can find a solution. Because whenever you try to explain it in a theoretical way, it is becoming even more difficult to understand what's happening and why we are using the math for the business courses or for some other economic courses. So in the traditional learning, everybody gets the same content. And whenever they miss a concept, they come behind the other student and everyone moves at the same pace. So you cannot differentiate anything. For example, here, uh, in these days, the learning system is really becoming more improved. You can use the blended systems. For example, you can divide the blended system into three. So for the disabled people, you can use the learning system so that they can get the necessary information. For example, if they cannot move, they can get everything by using the artificial intelligence. Whenever we come to the adaptive learning, the blended learning thing over the counter and using the simulations, they are all helping the students to find their own way. So for the educators, we decide what to teach. And then we try to manage, to control, to plan, to find a strategy that we can engage the students. So in order to reach the students, here we use the artificial intelligence. So here we can collect some data as it is explained in the video. You can make some tests and then you can make the students to get the grades and try to understand, for example, which questions they cannot answer or which concepts they didn't understand. So the artificial intelligence can change the way the questions have been asked or just exclude those questions and try to find another way, the other content that is mostly understood by the students. So the students can find the opportunity to adjust themselves according to their learning abilities. So they can make a learning plan just for themselves and the students find the opportunity to skip the concepts that they know already. And they can get the recommendation from an expert, from a coach, from the educator or instructor, and they try to master all the necessary concepts. So 
at the end, they can reach their target by really learning the necessary concepts. So it is really important to match the course learning outcomes with the program learning outcome so that you can understand at the end if the students have got the necessary skills, the necessary knowledge about the, each course that you are proposing to them. The next slide, please. Okay, whenever we mention about adaptive learning, it is important to mention about the adaptive learning platforms and the publishers. So here we can see some of the platforms like the Wiley, 2U, Canvas, Blackboard, New Spring, and we can see some adaptive content publishers like Wiley, McGrew-Hill, Pearson, Smart Sparrow. So the young people, which are young people who are very much eager to use the artificial intelligence, whenever they enter to these sites, these learning platforms, it is like the game playing. So even in the kindergarten or primary school, secondary schools, they can find the opportunities to use the artificial intelligence in order to gain the necessary learning skills. It is like the personalized learning skill, but it is not exactly the same. So this is really important that you can find more than one learning system or you can adopt to yourself not only to a specific one course, but into the interrelated courses by changing roles with your friends or by changing the roles with your competitors. So it is very much understood in this way. Thank you very much. The next slide. Okay. If you have any questions, I'm ready to answer. Thank you very much for listening to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, thank you. I hope you don't mind if we combine the question and answer session after uh, the next speaker. Uh, yeah, yeah is... of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that we can jointly discuss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it will be much better. Mm -hmm. thank you. Um, well, it's really wonderful that you have mentioned this. And um, basically, this is very much um, uh, is very resonant with so-called uh, consumer centric approach, except that it's not consumers, but it's the students, but it's student centric approach. And they do move at a, a different pace. And we cannot treat them as a monolith, as a market, which is um, uh, absolutely the same which is homogenous okay so and we're talking about approaches including um, artificial intelligence that will help tailor to the needs of specific students and that way uh their out the outcome their performance uh will be uh much greater so you cannot treat everybody the same way uh this is uh, i think one of the key challenges that um, we are facing today is to really how to create this customized uh tailored program to bring out the best in students so that they can capitalize on their talents and skills and abilities um and treat them differently depending on um their uh, talents. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, meaningful presentation. Uh, let us uh, please move to uh, the next speaker, um, Antonio Freitas. Uh, you are very welcome uh, to share your thoughts. Uh, Antonio? Yeah. Can you put my presentation board? Okay. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank Sergey for the nice words to me. I want to, to thank Elena and the team for, for this excellent opportunity to meet friends and students all over the planet. I apologize to, to Alina for calling her maybe late because of time zone. And uh, I also, I want to say that my wife and I, we visit Moscow and uh, St. Petersburg twice. The people was excellent, nice. The food was great and beautiful town. So I, I would try to share 
some experience of a, as a professor, no more than that. And uh, I don't necessarily need to be right. Please go, move on. The next sentence, okay. Well, the challenge of preparing young people for a profession gains particular significance at this moment when the economy, the universe of business and companies and the very definition of profession and careers are experienced and present changes faster, deeper and wider than any other occasion. In general, people change professions every five years. You know? Maybe most of us were not uh, uh, undergraduate in, 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 in education. I'm I'm engineer as a as a basic education. So people is changing along the time. So we are preparing people to practice 10 years from now, and they may retire in 19 in 2060 or 65. So we don't know the future. It's a very huge challenge to prepare a young person today for an unknown future. To understand the job market, we must keep in mind four key words, technology. As previously was said, technology is in, is in the heart of the education and business. Globalization, everything is now is global. We use Russian technology in Brazil. We may use Chinese products in Brazil. I hope we will export lots of food all over the planet. Actually, Brazil is the biggest export of, of uh, food. Service, service. Seventy percent of the jobs are service jobs. Seventy percent, and it may grow more and more because with compute, inter artificial intelligence, with new computer. The, the, the labor, the hard job will be uh, transferred to, to in, in artificial intelligence and, uh, and so on. And final, knowledge. We, everybody should have a basic knowledge because we, not, we are not teaching today what they will practice five years from now, 10 years from now. Please, next, next one. Next one. Thank you. What young people must learn today is mathematics. Mathematics is basic because of the logics and because you use in all day life. Computing, native tongue, foreign language, and especially soft skills. There is no machine that will, that will replace a great professor or a great medical doctor. So the soft skills is everything for the human being. No machines can substitute a great professor that illuminates the classroom or a medical doctor that touches you and you feel better. So soft skills is the main thing that will make us important in this planet. Professional opportunities, in fact, will tend to belong to people who know more than those who have academic titles. In many companies in the developed world, especially the United States, they don't require any more academic titles, PhDs, masters, uh, bachelors. They need, you know, they, they need to know, to know if you have the knowledge, the skills to perform a task not necessarily a, a academic title. So it's very important that what we teach has a meaningful, is relevant, and is, we will help the community to have a better life. So if it, just the academic title means less and less as the country develops, you know? The knowledge, the knowledge is, is really what, uh, what it means. For, we have a classroom in this, I'm showing you a classroom, and uh, Steve Jobs, 
Steve Jobs was a dropout in the first year of college because he, he, he saw no sense in college. And Steve Jobs changed the planet. Please move on. Let's change. The speed and cost of the transmission of information allow a conser- considerable part of the work to be done wherever you are. For instance, now I'm at home. I'm uh, home off. I'm work at home. So with the, the, the technology and the evolution of, of, of processors, every, every year they more than doubled its power. Now with 5G, everything will be very simple to reach any place in the planet. So uh, <clears throat> we can work in, in the beach or in, a, in, a, in, in any place. Everything that can be replaced by a machine will be replaced. So if a young person, and talk to the students, especially the students, if you do a job that is re- that this can be repeated over and over and over and over, this job will disappear. It will be done by a machine. So everything that can be replaced by a machine will be replaced. This is quite important. And I show here some pictures. In the left, you have a bank, a bank, maybe in 1950s. Now you have the, 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 the internet banking in almost all planets. They don't want to use money, no, just transfer, money transfer. Okay, please, next. Next slide, please. Next slide, okay. Therefore, young people must flee away from any career that involves mentally mechanized work. Flee away from any career that involves mentally mechanized work and approach areas where the triple intelligence, creativity, and ability to interact with the people are required. So you must have intelligence, you have skills, you have knowledge, you should be creative. But the ability to deal with people, the ability to deal with people is everything. Like Sergey, Sergey has the ability to, to deal with people. So this makes a lot of difference. So intelligence, creativity, but the soft skills, this ability to enchant people, to change people, to lead people. The profession of the future will have to be versatile and take care of his ability to learn because how we don't know how to teach what they will practice 10 years from now. We don't know where the, what they will need to practice 10 years from now. So they should have the ability to learn, uh, to take care of his learning ability, more, much more than preserve his specializations. So it does not matter. I'm the best guy in finance, whatever. 10 years from now, is it... it Useful? I don't know. I don't know. The, everything is changing. So the ability to learn, continuous learning. So the school should should really uh, give a, a, a special focus on the self-development. They should be self-confident that they can learn the new challenges. So what can we do? We can do a strong basis. So whenever a new technology appears, they will hold this opportunity. Please, next one. It will also be necessary to learn to work as a team. To work as a team. Because no one is capable of knowing everything. 
So I need the help of uh, Sergey, Alina, Mohamed, Elena, everybody. So we need to work as a team, team, teamwork. So this should begin in the school. It's teamwork in the school is extremely important because life is like that. The school should resemble life. People with their individual qualities will be everything in the service sector. The service, service sector employs now 70% of the population and it must grow because all, all hard work will, do, will be done by machines. So the service sector will grow. And, uh, and uh, people is everything with the qualities in this service sector. Look here, uh, Alain Ducasse is a great chef, was a great chef of cuisine. So we, we, you, you, have, you may have a great doctor who are great professor and so on and so forth. So the people will make a difference where the machines are doing the hard work. Please, the next one. Please, <clears throat> the, the, okay. From the company's point of view, globalization is an activity that can be pursued worldwide. For instance, uh, Volkswagen can have a plant in Poland in Spain, in Brazil, in Germany. So this is, for a company, this is globalization. They can work worldwide. For you and me, and for the students, for the people, globalization is an activity that can be pursued internationally. It means that a Russian can work in, in Poland, can work in Brazil, the Brazilian can work in Italy, and so on and so forth. So for the people, globalization is any activity that can pursue it internationally. Please, the next one. The next. Education is the process of facilitate learning. Facilitating, facilitating. Because some faculty don't facilitate the life of the students. Education is the process of facilitate learning. Each student has their own speed and we should respect the speed of the student. They might be slow, but they might be bright. They might make a difference. Actually, Albert Einstein's father thought he, he was mentally ill and Einstein was Einstein and is Einstein. Or the, or the acquisition of knowledge, skills. It's necessary to acquire skills, values, morals, beliefs, and the habits. Education can take place in formal or informal settings. Not, not necessarily education is, should be in school, between the, the boundaries of school. Why not a marketing class in, a, in, in, a, in, in, in the shopping center? Why not a, a, a marketing class in, 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 in a little shops and so on and so forth? So education can take place in formal or informal settings and any experience that has a formative effect on the way one thinks, feels or acts may be constant education. So I, I, at left, you can see people learning on the grass. Learning has happens anytime, anywhere. The middle, we can see a person in the top of, of, of the big mountain because it's a belief. He had the skills and the belief that they could do there. And finally, uh, at the right, you can see a young boy doing the homework in the motor, motorcycle of the father. Okay, please, the next one. 
The next one, please. Disruptive innovation is technologically straightforward, consisting of off the shelf. So all these big creations, like the, the cell phone, like the cell phone, everything is off the shelf. Everything was off the shelf. Everything was done. Only Steve Jobs put them together. Everything was ready. He did, he did create nothing. Even he was not an engineer. So he just put them together. So disruptive innovation is technologically straightforward, consisting of the shelf components put together in a new product architecture. It creates a new market. Now this is a new market. This has changed the planet. It creates a new market. Eventually, they will replace existing technologies. An example of this is mobile phones, Xerox, desktop computer, and so on and so forth. Now at the right, you can see a car that's a flying car. In Brazil, we made a flying car. Actually, in Brazil, we have a very large plane producer. We are the number three plane producer for commercial planes, Boeing, uh, <clears throat> and Air Airbus, and Embraer, uh, three biggest airplane producers. One of these this, this cars is a flying car. I think I, I just finished. Please, can you pass the, another one? I don't think, I, I think I just finished. Thank you very much. It was a, a great honor to be here with you, to learn with you, and to, to learn the different points of view. So it, I, I hope this, this was a, a, a global opportunity of change ideas. Thank you very much. And I hope to see all of, all of you in Brazil enjoy our beaches and our friendship. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Antonio, for your presentation and for the role uh, of the soft skills, which are going to be increasing in the future. Uh, the knowledge and the soft skills and the adaptability, how you change to the ever-changing environment. So this is a challenge. And I think it's actually enlightening to hear of school as the facilitator of learning, because sometimes, um, you know, sometimes it's not that way at all. And it's also important to have the right attitude. If you are helped, if you're facilitated in learning, you have the right attitude, you feel positive, and you're likely to um, grasp the topic, grasp the subject, and move forward swiftly. Well, let me um, introduce um, the other moderator who has been extremely cooperative, uh, who is also an expert. Um, would you please, um, Fatih, would you please uh, get involved and share your views and perhaps get the feedback from the students uh, to the experts? Thank you, Valena. Um, it's a nice conference and it is a very nice session um, focusing on education and the way forward that we are thinking about. Uh, we have already heard uh, uh, very precious um, thesis from the experts as well as some of our students. And um, we, can, we can be enlightened from those speech and from their presentations. Mm -hmm. Normally, yes, of course, um, if, I, if we can say that uh, education is modernizing. And for this reason, uh, many things are, getting, uh, are taking place uh, in a little bit differently. Like what, have, what, what we could learn from Professor Hasret. It's a very nice presentation where we can uh, understand about the adaptive learning and the traditional learning. Um, maybe there will be some sort of uh, more lectures or more <laughs> workshops to understand this, this properly and how to really uh, um, uh, we can implement the adaptive learning process in a, in a, in a university or in a country. Uh, all, with all these discussions, one thing has been added up, I believe, which is also the theme of the conference, uh, the today's conference, and that is the current pandemic situation. And this pandemic situation is also shaping some sort of uh, our education system and the method a little bit differently, as we can see. And uh, this might be another challenge. And I believe uh, uh, most of the researchers and most, most of our studies focus would be shifted on the, over there. 
because uh, we are now in the online learning process in the different mode in the different procedure how we are going to engage our students in this online environment how successful we are how can what should we do in order to make it more successful so these are the some uh, pros and challenges in this uh, crisis moment anyways very nice to, to have the presentations and i i am feeling myself very privileged highly privileged to be part of the conference um now my job uh, probably to facilitate the qa session from the participants as well as from the experts uh, what we can find here there are two questions already been here yes, one from professor please feel free you can either voice them or you can write them in the chat section yeah you mm -hmm. can you can write them in the chat section and i will read it out otherwise you can also uh, participate vocally the professor hasrat has mentioned a question um to our perhaps There's a question mm -hmm. to Hazrat. Spin roll, spin roll, never. Most probably, uh, mm -hmm. the role of experts. He, there, there, she. Uh, the question is, what is the ratio of women political experts to the total political experts in Russia? Uh, I believe there was an answer over there, but can you please uh, answer in front of the audience? Spin Nova, Mir Nova. Yes, I can. Well, according to one website. This is the ratio among the scientists in Russia of women, but I didn't find data which is of political scientists. So I think it is quite similar. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, any other questions from our experts or from our audience or students? I mean, the participants. so far the presentations that we go that we have heard yes. any questions the students please try to be more active and show initiative you know initiative yep. is always welcome or i will we can, appoint we can learn more from the question as well mhm mm yes no question Okay, well then I have a question to some of the students. Uh, how do you feel about this shift from this academic curricula to where you have a list of topics, a list of subjects that you need to cover, exams two times a year? How do you feel about the shift from this uh, rigid, uh, strict format to more of a flexible one? uh where your soft skills are more important where you have to adapt where you have to show agility and flexibility do you think that would be a transition for better or for worse and why uh if we don't have a speaker i will uh appoint the one who will answer the question ilya Yeah, good afternoon colleagues. My name is Ilya Gaidukov. I am a second year student of the Institute of Business Studies. And I would like to say that I think that uh the way where you have to participate with your soft skills where you your uh, curricula is more balanced is the efficient is the more efficient way uh of learning uh because you have to always be stretched, you have always to be active you have always to be persistent and you and you have to be also innovative uh and uh, i think this is the key point of uh, your participating if you want to be a, a top first specialist in our days so in your point of view by the way in here do you have a camera yeah um, you said you don't have a backdrop but but you have a, can you turn on the camera yes yeah this is much better mm -hmm. uh okay so yeah so you think this is the transition for the better palina shetalina yeah. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Polina Shetalina. I'm also the second year student. And in my opinion, uh, I would like to have uh, a format of education where I can choose uh, a list of subjects which I'm interested in, but what about more general conclusions? We will talk about this in our presentation because we have a project on this issue. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, by the way, that was my point, because we are gently and smoothly um, flowing into the second part of our presentation, when we're going to talk about best practices. So how this approach of 360 degrees um, view, you know, how this approach of soft skills, how the predominance of soft skills um, is uh, manifested in education of um, um, in best practices of top um, US business schools, um, Ivy League schools, and how they bridge the gap uh, between the university's graduates that they turn out and the employability that the business world requires. Okay, so the floor is all yours. Um, please begin. Hello everyone again. Um, now we would like to talk about some educational issues and our topic is to how to transform business schools and universities curriculum. Uh, first of all, I decided to introduce uh, you our team. My name is Polina Shetalina, the second speaker is Ilya Gaitukov and the third speaker is Natalia Rajnova. We are the second year students of the IPS Renepa and now we are ready to discuss our theme. Next slide, please. Um, uh, to begin with, we decided to do a research and asked four students uh, of the IBS from international management and HR management, uh, specializations approximately 19, 20 years old from Moscow and Moscow region. The list of questions you can see on the slide and also you can see the first bar chart. Uh, let's begin. Uh, which subjects at university are the most beneficial and valuable and why? Uh, based on this research, the most practical, practice-oriented subjects were human resource management, recruitment practice, law, general management, and English. These subjects can immerse a student into a theoretical basis fleetly for a more detailed understanding of the future profession and management psychology. They not only help to understand the essence of the profession, but also reveal cases from competitive business environment and help to gain experience in critical thinking and solving cases in stressful situations without having a substantial background of work in a company. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, mm, yeah. mm, as the least enlightening students noted such disciplines as philosophy, sociology, history, all kinds of economics and mathematics. As we can see, students don't see much practical benefit from dipping in liberal and mathematics disciplines, subjects that are focused on general personality development as well as on their ability to mathematically and economically assess risks are rejected by the majority of students. This happens, in our opinion, because these subjects, subjects are assessed as ineffective and not applicable in practice, but only as introductory for the formation of personality. But as we can understand, not all students are willing to advance and expand their bodies, so they just ignore these lessons. Uh, what is missing for students? According to the analysis of the questionnaire, we can conclude that they are in a lack of courses uh, that are aimed at developing soft skills, such as agile programs. Uh, students also claim that they lack practice, conferences, meetings with business teachers, master classes from those who have achieved success in the fields of management and HR management. Um, Please move on to the next slide. Thank you. 90% um, of the surveyed students answered that they would like to have a choice of subjects and the right to form their own schedule, while remaining 10% of the respondents said uh, that they would like the administration to analyze the market and draw up such a schedule so that students become the most competitive professionals on the market. That's about the question of Alina Vladimirovna. <laughs> 
A uh, majority of the respondents answered about unsatisfactory support of the university outside the academy and that there is not enough educational or working practice uh, with proposals from the university itself. 83% of respondents would like to have more support uh, and have weekly practice. Moreover, students indicated that they want more interaction with the younger generation of practitioners in business sphere, since most of the teachers at the university are theoreticians and a generation older than students. Sometimes they cannot find proper contact with students and due to this fact, students might have a burnout. As far as direct conclusions are concerned, we can recommend some things. The first recommendation is try to include on the first year, in addition to coaching, a career counseling program. Uh, the second recommendation is um, the possibility of choosing a specialization on the second year or a possibility of reprofiling uh, after the first year. And the last one is to try to include more practical oriented subjects or master classes for students. Now it's uh, John Foylia's speech. Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Ilya Gaidukov. I'm a second year student of Institute of Business Studies of Russian Academy of National Economics and Public Administration. Uh, my team and I have analyzed the best and leading business schools and their schedule. So on the slide, you can see the facts about the Government Business School. And now I'd like to tell you about some excellent features of the Government Business School. The first of all is a course aimed at solving business cases. Uh, this course is aimed at developing critical thinking, solving on standard business requests and problems, and improving students' uh, analytical skills. Moreover, an important difference is the special field method called FIELD. Uh, it is field immersion experiences for leadership development is a year-long field course giving first-year students meaningful and numerous opportunities to act like leaders. And I should say that field, field global immersion uh, course is a semester-long course where students work together with a partner company on a specific service or product. And the culmination of all this is a week-long immersion of the student in the company where they already work in the official office locally. And the third one, and last but not least, is the emphasis on leadership programs in the curriculum, where it's at the basis of their, of their schedule. So uh, next move to the uh, Stanford Graduate School of Business. So you can see in the last slide uh, some facts about this business school. And there are some excellent features of the Stanford Business School schedule. They are designed as a mandatory subject in all areas. So uh, this school of business presents completely uh, different areas of design specifically for each faculty. For example, in the MBA leadership program, uh, organizational design is a mandatory subject. And uh, moreover, I should say that there are use of mandatory professional tools such as career planning, personal and communication development coaching and lead through 160 assessment. So uh, it is the method of evaluating feedback from former managers and current managers lead to 160. And uh, this allows you to prepare future specialists from the very first day of their studying uh, at the university. And it also allows students to effectively set career goals. And uh, last but not least, uh, a wide range of unique individual programs for different areas of study. So here you can see the quotations and the comments of former students of Garvard Business School and Stanford Graduate School of Business. So these students are Russian students, and now they are currently working in the top companies. And uh, so you can see the comments of them here on the slide. So, but it is the good question. Why are these courses the most preferred? It's simple. These courses are most important for the IBS schedule. And uh, so uh, it should be important to stress that uh, the basis of uh, our uh, work of our studying is group programs and joint projects and moreover uh, it is projects where the most famous business related cases are solved and it can help to develop teamwork skills communication skills critical and analytical thinking and moreover we are interested in taking regular internships in companies and working on their products and uh, we are leaders and we are in the future and which is why leadership programs are so important in our course. And if we talk about the mandatory design course, uh, it should be mentioned that unfortunately, there are a few subjects on uh, our schedule where a lot of 
attention is paid to creativity. That's why a mandatory design course uh, elective is, for example, organizational design, game design, or digital design is a good opportunity to, imp to implement it in our schedule. And uh, uh, so uh, the use of such tools uh, as career planning, personal and communication coaching is also a great opportunity because we don't receive feedback from specialist managers, which would allow us to think more carefully about our weaknesses and work on them. So thank you, guys. Now it's Natalia's turn. Um, thank you, Ilya. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Natalia Rojnova, and uh, let's start. I'm sure that um, many people have noticed during the quarantine Many entrepreneurs increased their income and even run a new business. And they didn't do a long-term market analysis, they didn't make a business plan, and they didn't find the alternatives. After doing the analysis, they might have found that the short-term benefits wouldn't pay for the equipment costs, or they might have um, been confused when trying to calculate the, dura the duration of um, the pandemic. Instead, they simply go down to business using the resources, knowledge, contacts, and talents they had. In business school, as a rule, this is not taught. They prefer to predict risk um, and profit in detail. But the future is becoming increasingly unpredictable. So business schools will have to adopt, adopt a new philosophy to adapt quickly to new conditions. And I was interested to find out what subjects are needed in the business schools today. For this purpose, the analysis of recruitment sites and CV of top managers was carried out. Based on this, I have uh, identified the top 10 requirements for top management positions. You can um, see them um, on the slide. And um, let's, uh, let's list them. The first one, management decision making. The second, personal brand. Um, the next is team, team management experience or multitasking. Ability to assert other uh, one's point of view, ability to conduct um, negotiations, agile technology, ability to motivate or leadership, strong persuading skills, basic economical knowledge, and uh, innovative project-based thinking. Um, and uh, move on to the next slide, please. Um, on the slide, you can see the conclusions that I made after the analysis. Um, and um, the most important thing I would like to highlight is uh, about VUCA. It's um, an abbreviation of four English words, and uh, each of these words is uh, a challenge for managers. I'm sure that business school um, should um, provide the knowledge to help meet these challenge challenges. The second thing is about differences between Russian and Russian top managers. Um, for example, we know that Russian managers, um, uh, corporate fin finance management, and uh, we are good in business planning. But um, in fact, Western top managers are better in uh, soft skills such as um, um, ability to build teamwork, negotiate uh, leadership and others. And I'm sure that all students of business school should know something about uh, these uh, soft skills. And the third thing is about voice in uh, your head. A lot of people usually ask what if everything goes wrong or how to minimize the risk. Imagine how useful it would be to learn to drown out that voice and instead ask yourself, what if everything goes well? And um, finally, a personal brand. It's, um, um, in my opinion, it's the most important, uh, it's uh, one of the main important thing in um, um, business environment. And so, um, what list of items can be offered? You can see them on the slide too. Um, agile technologies in modern business, team building and team works, negotiations techniques, leadership is inside you, assess your resources and risks, personal brand in the business environment and innovative and project-based thinking. That's all I wanted to tell you. And um, we are ready to answer all your question, questions and discuss your ideas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's move on to 
Um, well, if there are questions, let's have a few moments for questions. Uh, if not, we can actually deal with questions at a later date when we have heard the three remaining speakers uh, who will talk about English and the importance of business English and some of the uh, differences uh, that need to be uh, implemented. <clears throat> uh, Please uh, let's begin. Well, one more thing I wanted to say is uh, uh, at RANIPA, it's really believed that uh, English is taught at a superior level, um, even similar or sometimes even superior to that of um, uh, language institutions, okay? And we do have um, uh, an extensive department and we have a number of challenging classes that would really propel you to move along uh, different um, stra straits, different areas of English, be it general, be it um, IELTS, be it business, okay? So let's um, hear from three more people uh, who will talk about uh, the value, the importance of business English, the importance of understanding it, and give us some practical tips how to improve it. Um, please, um, Daria, you good? Um, Daria. <laughs> yes. Uh, good evening, dear experts and participants of Student Gadar. Uh, my name is uh, Kvadaj Nadarya, and for me and my colleague, Maria Mikhailova, it is a great pleasure to perform in front of such a great audience. And today, I'm um, going to tell you about uh, English teaching. Uh, the main idea of our presentation is to clarify the difference between general and business English uh, language. Uh, although uh, they are the one unit, they cannot be taught and learned together using several uh, same methods. The aim is to state problems of business uh, English language, which it faces today, and find solutions to them. Also, we will slightly touch the subject related to the language base, its main characteristics. Uh, well, let's begin. Uh, firstly, we would like to start with uh, the general on, on the microphone, problems. can you kind of fix the microphone? It's not really working very well. You cannot hear you all that well. Um, well, um, yeah, but now it's fine. Yes, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, firstly, we would like to start with general English. Uh, general English is the language which is used uh, by most of the population of the European community. Also, it is the base language. Uh, general English is represented in the world community as the first international language. Uh, it is the language that is used in everyday life, and general English provides express calls and structure for informal communication. It is also used for the population. Still, though, there are some problems with the sound. Uh, mm, well, it's okay now. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's starting with the internet because we know in academy. <laughs> uh, so well, I'll try to speak loud. Uh, it is also used for the preparation of academic materials and teaching aids. Uh, the mix of the language is grammatical and lexical aspects as well as the variety of grammar. Uh, this you can see on the slide. Uh, grammar helps us to understand how English works. We all bring order, logic, and clarity into the process of studying English. It specifies how sentences are built to make sense, identifies the meanings of individual words in the sentence, and explains the relationship between them. Uh, the dialect, which is uh, one uh, form of uh, general English, uh, is uh, 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 the problem of dialect. Uh, is that their use leads to misunderstanding. Uh, there is no such th thing in business English, and there are no dialects. Uh, it is also important to mention that general English is a technical language. This type of language is also used in most computer programs because they are designed by machines. 
the different the vocabulary in the professional level would not allow most of the population to use their information space. And now we will move on to the basis of business language. Yes, uh, business English is an internal type of language that people use exclusively on a professional level. And now I would like to talk about it. Business English is based on knowledge in some fields, and uh, each of these data uh, is for negotiations and for the design of external economic relations. For example, uh, in conducting business, the ability to negotiate, to form one's own opinion, and to use a professional language to express and present ideas and presentations maybe has a great influence. In planning, uh, accounting requires not only knowledge of how finance is distributed and how the banking system works in business and entrepreneurship, but also knowledge of terminology, which has many pitfalls, internal contradictions, and differences from the base language. Today, we can identify three main problems in business education. Uh, these are as follows. Uh, you can see on the slide is professional suitability of business English mentors, integration into virtual reality and variability of the real situation in the business world and uh, the students' needs. And uh, we would like to take them apart and talk more about the problems and about their solutions. And so the first problem, in fact, is the lack of professional personnel uh, with the necessary competencies to train business students. Uh, today, business English uh, is not sufficiently segregated from English basics. Uh, thus, specialists in one sphere are being pulled into another. This is because business English is perceived part of a core language course uh, with some offshoots. Accordingly, the teaching of this aspect of the language is not separated by, the co by context from the general English. In fact, the problem also stems from the training and education of the necessary personnel. Uh, in higher educational establishments, there is no such direction as business English teaching. Uh, and so the maintenance solution to this problem uh, may be as follows. Uh, first, the preparation of special courses, uh, such as education and business English, uh, so that applicants for the course of teachers um, of the teachers of this aspect of the language will be obliged to take the relevant courses and will to and will have the necessary knowledge, skills, and competencies to train future personnel and join management. Uh, another solution is uh, the re-examination of business approaches. Uh, thus, uh, separating business English from the general sector, up new perspectives for an altered academic approach and corresponding uh, to the development of depth and specific uh, knowledge of the subject. Uh, and the second uh, problem uh, that we found uh, that you can see in this slide is uh, uh, separation into virtual reality. Uh, by this heading, we mean uh, business transitioning into an information uh, environment. So, due to related events, most of us, I mean, the pandemic situation, many entrepreneurs and companies are very. I'm sorry, girls, I have to interrupt here. I virtually, none of us can ver hear you virtually, you know. Um, can you kind of go over, first of all, let's try, say something so we, you, you are, we can hear you. Uh, well, yeah, it's just the voice of very volatile. It disappears. It disappears. Uh, maybe. Now it's no, echo. No, no, no. So you probably need to to shut off the microphone. Well, let me shut off mine if I know that that helps. Uh, try uh, with problems and solutions again, please. Uh, so, again, about the problems and solutions. Uh, the first problem, as I uh, noticed, is the professional suitability of business English uh, It is... Um, in fact, uh, the problem uh, is that specialists in one sphere are being put into another uh, because business English uh, is uh, not uh, separated from the uh, general English. Uh, and so uh, 
also the problem stems from the training and education of the nursery personnel. Uh, and so in higher educational establishments, there is no such direction as business in and the main solutions that I uh, that I said about are the preparation of special classes, such as education in business English, so that applicants who would be the teachers uh, of the suspect of the language will be obliged to take uh, relevant courses and will have the necessary knowledge and skills that uh, would uh, be uh, well for the and the other solution is uh, the re-examination of uh, business approach to English, uh, so that separating business English from the general sector will open up a new perspective for a literal academic approach. Uh, the second problem that I started to talk about is the integration into virtual reality. Uh, and by this heading, um, I meant that business uh, is transitioning now into uh, is, uh, information environment, and so due to the latest events that we all know about, the situation, um, uh, many entrepreneurs and companies were internally moved into the internet space. Uh, so that banners, leaflets, and other physical elements of advertising have been replaced uh, by various types of advertising on the internet related to social networks and social and so, having switched to our main topic, business education, uh, we can see you is necessary in the process of studying the subject to deepen into the issues of the inter internet environment. Uh, that in an entrepreneur and management now uh, need to have knowledge about information security, about the use of various uh, internet resources and problems in conducting business, as well as about advertising and internet marketing in general. Uh, and the first one that we also have is the work tracking of the business environment. And as we said, um, the academic panel presented from the business English textbooks it's quickly added, and they do not adapt much to changing realities. Thus, uh, if in basic English we use uh, standardized textbooks, fully justifies itself, um, since their requests uh, in this aspect of the language, uh, which are not volatile and represent the basis that is subject to academic processing. Uh, this is the wrong approach to business education. The only solution to this problem, uh, as we see it, uh, is uh, in the use, uh, in the process of learning business English, studying various real articles and uh, of any changing teaching methods. Of course, business English textbooks are useful because they represent the lexical core of this aspect and the language, um, but teaching and learning materials should inform the basis of the subject. And um, to sum up, uh, we can underline the most important ideas of our presentation. Uh, firstly, business English uh, should be detached from general English and to make it more professional oriented. And business English has some significant problems, which we have mentioned before. Uh, all, of course, each problem has the unique solution. Uh, however, not all, all problems were mentioned, and those solutions are not the only ones. And we just wanted to start the discussion by making you think about this topic uh, and consequently make the educational process more effective. Thank you for your attention. Igor, what uh, do you have to add? Because your uh, presentation was also yes. focused on the role of English. So what's yes. your take out? What are some of the recommendations and suggestions and how you can liven up the discussion that has been going on? Uh, sorry for I... the technical issues, but I think you were still able to grasp the major point. Yes, I also have my own presentation, if I could show it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Thank you.
Um, yes. So, uh, greetings, uh, everyone. Um, uh, grateful to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Igor uh, Gajander, and I am from Kivaskula University of Applied Sciences from Finland, but I'm doing my exchange here in Franepa. I did uh, my own small uh, research, but it's more or less based on my own experiences, and I used some secondary data. Um, Yes, as we know, the uh, world is full of cultures and different languages. And Ethnologue, which is a database uh, that covers majority of the world's population, um, says that there is uh, 7,111 living languages, which means that living language is when there is a native speakers. Um, and the English is the fourth most spoken language with 1.1 billion people speaking it, and 379 uh, native people, native speakers. And yes, business English is a term uh, terminology uh, used to describe a certain knowledge, certain level on English. You are able to execute business operations, have day-to-day -day conversations, and English overall is a very very common uh, second language in the Western part of the world. And how would you learn it? We learn it in school, obviously. Uh, I have been learning it from the first grade, but I have noticed that school actually gives only a base. And by base, I mean in school, we get taught uh, vocabulary, uh, grammar rules, like basic knowledge of the language but we never uh, actually got to learn the communication part of it and um, my hypothesis for this presentation is that english speakers are having trouble with communication even they uh, even when they are uh, have a correct education and are accounted as English speakers. And by, by, what do you mean uh, by that is um, the knowledge is a tool and communication is a skill, which uh, obviously as another skill you need to practice for it to be better. And I have run into a lot of people with proper education, but they are not at all able to communi uh, communicate in English. And the problem is that, for example, uh, you learn English for 10, 12, 13 years, and you are able to put in your CV that you uh, have uh, great grades in English and you know English. But the truth uh, might be very different when you get face to face with, uh, for example, customer, because your communication is not uh, as good. And I have discovered two uh, main problems. They are both based on my own experience. I'm not, uh, I'm not studying any psychology or languages, but I do have own experience. I have two mother languages. And I study on English. Uh, and since I'm from Finland, we also have to study Swedish. So basically, um, yeah, two main problems. There are 65% uh, uh, of English speakers are counted as non-native. And uh, there is a uh, communication problems. Um, the first one is mental barriers. Um, uh, I would like to provide some solutions based on my own experience. Um, and the first one would be uh, to identify the problem. Why uh, there is, for example, I have run into people who um, can uh, speak uh, English, but they are like 
a lack of practice. Um, and for me, the problem was uh, before I started studying on English and actually practicing my communication, uh, the mental barrier. I was afraid of looking silly because I make mistakes on uh, English. And uh, I would like to say that there is no, no uh, trouble that you uh, actually, now from my own experience, nobody looks silly when they speak uh, other language. And it might be even that it is uh, some kind of trauma from school previous years, because majority of time when we learn English, we are talking with our teacher who is an expert in English and they basically uh, point out our mistakes, which is obviously the, uh, the way because we need to learn the right way. So in the end, you end up being maybe a little bit afraid of speaking English. And I have some experience with native speakers from Great Britain, which is not a great experience for me because when I try to communicate with them, their answer was for me the speak proper English. Uh, they're not like, uh, like you uh, mistakes, but uh, I pointed out that I speak, for example, three other languages and English is the second language. So, Наталья Лобачева, please shut off her microphone, please. Well, whoever else has it turned on, please turn off your mics. Only the speaker's mic is on. Uh, thank please you. continue. Igor, please yes. continue. Yes, thank you. Um, and if you're afraid of using a foreign language, you are afraid to look silly, making mistakes, I would like to say, don't worry. You can't speak right version of language without speaking a broken version first, which is uh, obviously the truth. Uh, babies learn language before they go to school to learn any vocabulary, grammars, or anything else. They learn uh, by speaking it, by hearing it, and stuff like that. And they're not afraid of making mistakes. And um, let go of perfection. It's very important. And seek one-on-one -on -one conversations. You can start from small, speaking with someone you know or stuff like that. It's very important to practice uh, your communication. And the second one is um, lack of experience. Obviously, you graduate. For me, example, I graduated from high school. It's uh, 12 classes uh, in Finland. We have been learning English and I could say that after I graduated it with uh, good uh, grades, I still was bad at communicating in English. So <clears throat> what I want to point out is practice. You need to practice uh, like any other skill. You, um, and uh, uh, in my opinion, most important, also most important is start thinking in English because I have run into people who formulate thoughts uh, in their own language when you speak with them. They formulate thoughts in their own language, then they translate it to English, and then they speak. And usually the word order is uh, no good. Uh, they take time to do so, and they may have lost track of thoughts, and that is no good way of communicating. You need to start thinking in the language you are speaking and you can train that, you can practice that by listening and processing, basically processing data in other language in your head. So you become better at uh, communicating. And the last part is uh, what I learned by doing this research is that you're actually able to control speed of conversation. And what I mean by that is when I speak slowly with somebody, uh, I'm quite sure that they will answer me on the same speed as I speak with them. It's a very important thing to remember because um, this is a social thing. And yes, basically, uh, if you want to be clear and uh, learn 
uh, talk slowly and the other person will talk slowly to you. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, thank you. I hope I was able to deliver my idea and uh, I was a bit stressed, so. Well, this is another reason uh, by one of the challenges and one of the key learnings is that uh, learning by doing. The more you practice, the more you present at presentations, the less stress you feel, the better, the more self-confident you feel. And that would be an upward spiral, uh, spiraling right into um, uh, successful completion of your uh, presentations in English. So, Igor, thank you. You have done a good job. Thank you. Well, uh, Uh, We are actually coming to a close of our sessions, but before we do that, um, there was was, um, a request for the best speaker. So we're going to choose the best speaker or maybe two speakers if they come almost in a draw uh, to who will win a session uh, of um, an individual session or an individual um, Yeah, masterclass. Oh, oh, wow, one, one or two, one or two speakers. First. Yeah, one or two. Yeah, perhaps, Elisabetta, you can talk more about this since you're an expert and you're the one conducting all this uh, lottery or whatever, research questionnaire. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, did uh, did all of you, colleagues, uh, vote for uh, speakers? So did you yes, do that? Or it, was up. it has been up actually for about 10-15 minutes. So I think for everybody that's about time, uh, you can choose either a QR code or a link of, or whatever, which whichever is most convenient. Yes, I did. And I hope others did as well. So great. So I download the results actually. Uh, so thank you very much. I really enjoyed your session today. So mm-hmm. all of you were amazing so let me share the screen oh. so uh so i divided you into teams mm-hmm. so, uh so the first team shatarina gaidukov and rajnova congratulations Uh-huh. So, Actually, there are three of people three. in the first team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think that we can separate the team at all. I think they have been working um, together. And how can you pick two out of three? You know, Unless there is a way you can ask some questions, some tricky questions to everybody. How are we going to do that, Lisa? Lisa? Uh, so... My part is to present to you uh, the results uh, and probably I can uh, ask our expert uh, if he wants to uh, ask some motivational questions mm-hmm. to the team and probably it would help. Uh, uh, yeah, it would help. So now uh, the expert decides. So okay, so uh, we uh, serve um, as experts Uh, I and uh, Fatih. So Fatih, would you please start uh, um, asking one question to three people? I'll do the next one. And out of three, we have to choose two. Okay. Uh, so you have uh, so Gaidu- Gaidukov? Is, yeah. Okay, to go to your, uh, Gajokov, I believe, the name is, uh, in, your, in your paper that you have written on how to transform business schools and university's curricula um, and training for career development. Now, my question is, uh, yes, we understand that uh, the current education system is going through Uh, is going through the uh, process and it is transferring from uh, theoretical base to the application of vocational uh, vocation oriented but my question is there is still a dilemma well, what how, how how can we solve that dilemma because mother science this is the this is the uh, wheel of the invention why applied science this is the uh, tool of applications how you can merge these two and what would be your opinion regarding this So, okay, thank you for the question, Fatih. I think that uh, the obvious solution for this dilemma can be to provide the opportunity for students to choose them the, uh, the subjects which they want. 
For example, if they want to go to have mathematic classes and to have computer sciences, they have to do it. But if they want to have more humanitarian classes, they have to they have to have this opportunity. So I provide, and I suppose that we have to implement uh, the choice for the students in order them to find their subjects which they want. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we have kept your answer. Now we will think. <laughs> we will, okay, thank you. Thank you for your answer. Um, okay, well, I guess, uh, could you ask another question to Paulina and Natalia? Maybe the same one to both of them? Well, I can answer the same okay. question. Okay, all um, right. Uh, in my opinion, of course, I'm agree with, <laughs> I agree with Ilya because we did uh, research together. But in my opinion, the solution lies uh, in close communication with business coaches and trainers and the people who gained experience in business sphere, this um, environment. Uh, so students just can gain experience and they have no choice uh, not to gain this experience, to be honest. Uh, then they communicate with uh, clever people who gained experience. Um, they try to um, find the solutions, but the latent knowledge is always behind them and they can just take it. And I suppose that this is a solution of this dilemma. And Natalia? I hope that you can hear me. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, uh, I want to ask a different question because um, my colleagues answered this uh, twice. So you want a different question? Yeah, maybe someone want to discuss something else. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think uh, students um, uh, rated down such disciplines as philosophy and history, um, even though they are excellent for developing soft skills and critical thinking, uh, which, which are important today? So why did students um, appreciate them much less than other classes? Hmm, I think that um, it depends on um, uh, teachers and um, their money of uh, speaking because um, I have uh, a lot of um, friends that uh, they are studying uh, in uh, philosophy and um, they don't like their um, process of studying because um, they have uh, teachers um, and um, they speak boring and um, <laughs> I have found, um, a video where my friends sleep uh, during this um, mm -hmm. and um, I hope that um, I hope that um, in the future a lot of uh, teachers and um, teachers will be more um, will be will um, improve their um, uh, way to um, enthusiastic and engaging yes and um i'm i think that um, they should um use um, maybe video material not only um, uh, speaking because um, when you listen uh, a lot you are uh, you want to sleep it's uh, effect mm -hmm. okay uh so uh let's um uh, Fatih, what's your point of view we still need to choose two out of three um actually if, uh, if i consider the answers <laughs> i must say this all the three are equal <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's that. that's kind of tricky. I agree because you know all three of them worked on the same team, so I guess we cannot separate them. I guess they're yeah, inseparable. Yeah. Uh, well, um, we can ask um, Hazred because she has graciously agreed to um, 
uh, provide a session or some kind of a workshop. The format Hazard is completely like is all yours. So uh, would you um, agree to meet with three team members rather than one? It's only for a half an hour session. Uh, I will. I will meet three of them because they're well, nice. well motivated. I think they're excited and uh, I like the excited people because they're motivated. It means that they are taking their, their responsibility seriously. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I have tried to attend uh, nearly all of the sessions because we know Russia, but it is important to understand the education system and it gives a chance to understand the quality of the students. And uh, according to me, the new students, they are very qualified and they are very motivated. They know what they are doing. They are taking the responsibilities very nicely because you know, you are sending messages uh, by using the WhatsApp and they are trying to obey the rules, the expectations and everything. So it is, uh, I'm following in a very uh, detailed and careful way. And I like them really. And they're trying to do their best. Mm -hmm. So three of them, they're really motivated. They can have some uh, different skills. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know some people uh, like to speak. They can explain everything in a nicely way. Some of the people know really in a nicely way, but, but maybe they cannot have the necessary skills. So this is what teamwork is all about. They complement each other. So they yes, yes, together they have all other. the skills. So, mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. They're, mm -hmm. they're doing very well. So mm -hmm. it's good. It's like the tire and the car. You know? Okay, so oh, then I guess you. moving forward, this is what we're going to do. We will be in touch. Two of those students okay. are my students. So I am in touch with oh, them on a regular like basis. Yeah, like <laughs> so you <laughs> let me know because you have graciously agreed. So that's kind of the ball is in your court. So you let me know how you would like to plan it. And I will inform them and okay. you can agree on the time sessions. Um, thank okay. you so much for agreeing. Uh, and oh, uh, our it's my session... Pleasure. Thank you. So our session is coming to a close. I would like to welcome all of the participants and thank them, all of them, because this has been hard work. I am particularly impressed with my students. Uh, I'm also impressed with others. I think for you, this is a great opportunity to learn, a great opportunity to meet new people, to expand your horizons, and to learn some of the technical things, like how, what's the inside of a presentation? What's the inside of the conference? Um, also, I'm, I would like to thank the administrator of our WhatsApp group, Ilya Gaidukov, who's been very helpful. I hope it has been a good uh, learning experience for you as well, not only professionally, but from the standpoint of managing, of keeping everything under control. And um, it has been an utmost pleasure to communicate with, uh, with all the experts and with Hazrat and um, with um, Fatih, exceptionally cooperative all of you guys you. so it's, it's a great pleasure for um all of me so for for me uh so Fatih, what about you what can you say in conclusion okay this is this is a very good con conference this is the unique conference where the students they are presenting in front of the experts in front of their uh, senior colleagues and sharing their ideas and knowledge i i must say that this, this is a unique platform actually it's very unique platform a unique conference that I, I, I can see and this is my first term uh, first time participation and I really like this conference it's a great opportunity for the students to explore themselves and to become great professionals so I wish all the best to all the students and I believe that they would be uh, definitely a very uh, professional and acknowledged scientist um, in the years to come Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, on this optimistic note, on this uplifting note, let me close the session. And um, if there are any questions, Alena, you can always... Yes. Could I say a couple of words? Uh, I would like to congratulate all the participants 
Well, it really was a great event and a great job that everyone has done and contributed to the success of the conference. And special thanks to our, uh, well, I wouldn't say guests, participants, I mean the experts, thanks a lot. Dear students, you really were amazing. Each one contributed seriously to what we call academic uh, performance, really. And we are looking forward, guys, don't relax, just take a little rest and start getting ready for the next year's event. We have a lot in store for you. And one request to everybody, please, we really need your feedback on what you've gone through, on your impressions. On our site, there is a drop box uh, where you can leave your feedback. It just says, feedback, please. So we really would appreciate your another little contribution to our success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope to see you again. Well, um, then I guess we are calling it off right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. Good luck and uh, goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank Have you very much. Bye-bye, everyone. It was great.